please watch out for expectation, even in our probability distribution. We are going to make, make use of E of x a lot later, expectation of x. And we are going to end up using this NP a lot. In fact, in continuous distribution, we are going to be making use of integral f of x for continuous distribution. That's why I said you have to understand topic 5 before you can do some things in topic 4. Not all of them, but especially in continuous distribution. We'll get there, don't worry. So expectation is not just limited to this, but let's start from this baby uh, approach or baby explanation, idea of expectation. Now, from experimental probability, we have talked about the probability of an event being the relative frequency. That is the frequency of that occurrence, of that event, right? With respect to everything. That's what we mean by relative frequency. So if I perform an experiment, I roll a die, or we inject people with vaccine during the trial stage, okay? Then our, uh, our event could be how many people have side effect that they felt dizzy and they had to be, you know, quickly put on the bed to relax or whatever. Then we did it for 50 people and we realized that, oh, actually it happened to like five people. Okay? Then you say, oh, the probability of that happening is 5 over 50, which is 1 over 10. Then, oh, 1 over 10. That means it is effective 90%. Shall we think this is safe? That's why you hear something like, oh, Vysafacin is 95% effective, da, da, da. It's as a result of that relative frequency because they are dealing with experimental situation. They are not dealing theoretical. They are not assuming, oh, when I inject 10 people from this class, I expect it to affect just two people. Come on, this is human life. It has to be practical, all right? So that's this we have talked about in the past. If you now cross multiply from here, you realize that the number of times that that event occurs is just the probability of that event occurring times the number of trial that was performed. So which means if Pfizer or Madonna said our vaccine is 95 over 100 effective, it means when we inject it on the population of 1 million, is it 1 million? Yes. It means about 909, 950,000 people will be fine. And I say, ah, uh, it will not really affect uh, more than 50,000 50, people from the population of 1 million, even though that's a lot of things. But when we say affect, we remember we're talking about maybe effects of it. Maybe uh, that's why you hear something like somebody took the vaccine and they were still tested positive for COVID. Did it tell you it's 100%? Maybe, you know, their system, body system varies. It could be injected to you immediately and every form of COVID disappear. Or who knows, maybe the guy or the lady already had COVID yesterday and it was injected today. Maybe that is the COVID already in the system. So no one is going to claim 100%, expect that, especially in clinical trials like that. Well, maybe in special cases, I don't know. Anyways, but the problem here is, we cannot expect something in a practical experimental situation. We have to be able to do it. And in the experimental situation, unless you do the experiment, you don't know the probability. And once you do the experiment, you already know your expectation anyway. So when talking about expectation, while we are using the idea of the cross multiply, the expression uh, that we obtain from cross multiply, the probability in question would be the theoretical. Oh, we are not doing this experiment, but how many do I expect? Then you base the probability on my theoretical probability. Oh, theoretically, how many do I expect to be boys in the AAHL class? Do you understand? Then I can base my expectation on that. Remember, I'm not performing any experiment now. Oh, theoretically, how many do I expect to come to school tomorrow? So if I can get that probability, I can multiply by this and I can get my expectation. Do you understand? That is why we say the expectation of that event 
is the probability, remember this probability now is the theoretical probability, times the number of trial or the total possible, number of total uh, possible outcome. And that gives the expectation of that particular one. So that's all this is about. So you might be seeing a lot of NP or whatever, that is number times probability. This is what it means. Okay? That is without performing any experiment, if we can predict a theoretical probability of that event happening, and if you give us a total number of uh, trials, we can give you the expected value of an event. So we call this expectation or something. Okay? We'll be using the idea of random variable later, so I'll be calling the expectation of x. But I don't want to introduce too many mathematical jargons, so let's just call it expectation of an event. But later I'll be calling the expectation of x. Okay, expectation of x, x as a random variable. What random variable means, don't worry about it yet. Okay, that's, we'll talk about that more in probability distribution. So, I want you to check your WeChat now. I just sent something that I composed earlier. Oh no, I sent the wrong one. This is for additional probability. For my expectation of x, I think I identify 11e. Alright, I, I didn't send that. 11, what did I just send to you now? What? F. Okay, we jump one step. So 11E, set, check now. Please quickly attend question one and three. Five minutes, please. Question one and three with your friend. Five minutes. So one and three. How many penalties would be expected? So just say E brackets penalty or expectation of penalty. Okay? Or you can say E brackets penalty. Understand? There are about six questions. I just ask you to pick one and three. Please make sure you uh, practice the rest also on your own. So let's just compare notes. Once you are able to finish one and three, check with your friends. Make sure you, everyone is on the same page. Please be careful with the way you present the solution. Use the appropriate notation.
includes. Or includes. Yeah, because it's like, or that. So like, uh, let's say. Wait, so A or B includes A and B. Because it's like, um, is Karen Chinese or a girl? Yeah, she's both. Oh, so you can see. You get a decimal for the uh, for, for the, the expectation. Yeah, you approximate the nearest to a number. Okay. Because you, you can't say I expect 3.5 things to happen. Okay. Expectation is number, right? Mm. And it has to be a whole number. So you just approximate the nearest whole number. It's an expectation. It's an approximation. So we can't say oh round it down, round it up. Just approximate the nearest whole number. It's not exact. It's what you expect. Okay? Take note of the compound events, and uh, I have mutually and non mutually exclusive events at the last two. Just wanted to mention that.
that's an email? Oh! an example here. Everyone, please listen. We will still continue with this tomorrow, applying uh, the stuff. Or oh, wait, tomorrow is Friday, yeah. and it's the last day before the exam. Yes. Would you rather I just print question from exam and you practice in the class, or we just continue probability and I leave you to practice on your own? No, I said practice. Speak this. Exam practice. Okay, so I'll get some paper two problems. I'll oh. print questions. What? Can you show us the paper? You're wasting my time. No, I said, like, tomorrow can you show us the paper three because you said you were going to show up. But, yeah, but I haven't shown you paper three? Oh. Okay, that's fine. Okay. I thought I have. Okay. I didn't send paper three. There was a time I sent you a PDF and I said, this is what I've compiled about paper three so far. I thought you could go over any class. Oh, do you have the paper three PDF? Do you save the things I sent to you? Did I send any paper three compilation? Yeah. All right, please. I, I have very little time. I have duty, so I don't want to be late. Types of events that are of interest to us are these two for now. We're going to talk about dependent and independent event later. And that leads us to something called the Bayes theorem. Now, compound events, just as the name implies, is like composite function or compound shape when you're finding area. 
it means two shapes together. Composite function means two functions are joined. Okay? Okay? Now, in compound event, it means in that case we have more than one event in your sample space. Okay? So if my sample space consists of one, two, three to six, which is uh, what happens when you roll your die. Okay? I could talk about different events. Picking a prime, picking a, you know, an odd, a square number. There will be different things that I could come up with. So if I'm dealing with more than one at a time in that particular problem situation, then I'm dealing with compound events. Now, this compound event, this is, the note, this is just for notation purpose. So if A and B are two events, it could be more than two. Okay? If A and B are two events in our sample space, we already talked about events as subset of the sample space, isn't it? That's why I just used the notation that is A, B are subset of universal set. Then, if you want to write the event that A and B occur, so you just simply write A intersection B. Intersection is and, isn't it? Union is all, and that's why we say if you want to write the event that either A or B occurs, for notation purpose, you just write A union B. We understand that's what you mean. Okay, this is just for notation. It's not something you need to memorize, something you should know. Okay, but just like repeating it again. Then this is very important. We have the mutually exclusive and non mutually exclusive events. And this we determine what our addition law of probability will look like depending on the problem we are dealing with. Two events are mutually exclusive if they cannot occur together. I'll give you an example. You see that sample space consisting of one, two, three, two, six. Let's say event one, A is the event that square numbers occur. The event that square numbers occur will be one and four, right? Event B might be the event that prime numbers occur. What's that? Can they occur together? Can these two events occur together? No. no. OK? So if they don't overlap, let's put it that way, then they are mutually exclusive events. So that's why we say if A and B is A intersection B is empty, remember this is also a set which is like subset of this. Okay? And the reverse is the case here. If they are non-mutually exclusive, it means they are likely to occur together. So for example, if I have an event C, which is set of odd, uh, which consists of the event that I pick, I see an odd number, then I get one, three, five. Clearly, these and these are non mutually exclusive, and these and these are also non mutually exclusive. Do you understand? But A and B are mutually exclusive events. The reason for mentioning this is the addition law of probability. You have done addition, uh, addition of A or B, boys or girls, right, in the past. So in general, the probability that A or B occurs should be probability of A plus probability of B minus probability of A intersection B. Does everybody understand how I got this? It's just from the addition, uh, the set formula. You know the set formula? Cardinality of A union B, right? Equals to cardinality of A. Please, if this is strange to you, speak now. Anyone? Is this strange to anyone? Raise your hand if this is not straight to you. OK. How about you? OK. So if you divide everything by cardinality of the entire sample space, you get the probabilities. That's what we are saying. But if they are mutually exclusive events, this is 0. So if you are dealing with mutually exclusive events, this is the addition law that you state. But if you are dealing with non-mutually exclusive events, you have to include this. That's all about the addition law of probability. I'm just going to write on the board and you can copy later. Understand? So for the next two or three minutes, let's write what you can write. Keep that rolling so that uh, when, if you miss to write something in the class, you can uh, copy later. So I'll leave this uh, example.
So if I want to over, so these are together, right? Mm. So if we add A and B together, mm. then this is going to happen twice. You can go uh, on page 266, exercise 11F, from them 1 to 8. So next time we will start with. Uh, <laughs> friends shaking hands. I can't see any friends shaking hands here. Okay, do time for shaking hands. Okay, so uh, let's uh, go for lunch or whatever we do at this time. I'll take a picture, we send to the group, and I'll upload the video later.